Um, in a previous interview, you were a bit critical about how heavily the civil rights movement relied on the leadership of Martin Luther King. Um, I was just wondering what you think successful leadership is, whether it's supplemental to these movements, um, and how leaders can contribute their time, talent, and treasure to these movements without being the sole propeller of them. Our, our critique of Dr. King, and, and remember we loved Dr. King, and we admired him a great deal. We thought he was bravery personified, uh, worth somebody worth following. The, our critique of him was that he often, without meaning to, said to local people, I'm gonna take care of your problems. You don't have to worry about these things, I'll do it. And I say this is not something he was said, this was something they imputed to him, and as a consequence, felt themselves less likely or less able to join in helping themselves. Uh, so t leadership is always a necessary component of, of social change, but that leadership doesn't have to stifle. And we believe that Dr. King's persona, again, not through his own making, but through the eyes of others, stifled their own ability to act in, as leaders. So with, I remember I was in a hotel in Atlanta once having a meeting with Dr. King and passed by a bunch of maids in the hallway. And one of them said, Dr. King just went by. I know all our problems are gonna be solved now. Apparently they had some dispute with the hotel. But Dr. King was not there for their dispute with the hotel, although I'm sure he sympathized with it. He was there for entirely different purposes. But they had transferred their responsibility to do something about their condition to this man who was just passing by. So that, that's our, our argument with him. And again, it was not a personal argument with the persona. It was the argument uh, with the people who thought this of him and imputed to him the ability to solve their problems.